filmmaking is an ongoing process where not everything goes according to plan. Because productions aren't always smooth sailing, one of the elements that help fine-tune a movie is a reshoot. With horror movies, reshoots are crucial and often hail from test screenings, which are very important for the genre. Some viewers may not like certain characters or endings, and so in order to placate those doubters, new sequences are filmed to replace them. So, with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture, here with 10 horror movie characters killed in reshoots. Number 10. Devil's Flight Survivors in Final Destination 3 In Final Destination 3, Wendy Christensen receives a horrific vision where she and her friends die riding the Devil's Flight roller coaster. She then warns everyone to get off the ride, and in true Final Destination fashion, the survivors are killed one by one in bloody accidents. The original ending took place at the local Tricentennial, where Wendy and her friends encounter Ian. The young man blames our heroine for the death of his girlfriend, but before he can enact his vengeance, he is killed by a cherry picker. With Wendy, her sister Julie, and Kevin all safe, the trio leave the scene and the film just ends there. This abrupt finale was negatively received by test audiences, and so a new ending was filmed. The new sequence takes place five months later when Wendy and company are reunited at a subway. They quickly realise that death has united them though, and a freak accident kills them. Until it's revealed to be one of Wendy's visions. But despite their efforts of stopping the train, the film cuts to black and we hear the sound of the subway derailing once again. Number 9. Jamie in Dead Silence Dead Silence was James Wan and Lee Whannell's next collaboration after striking gold with the Saw movies. The film tells the story of Jamie Ashen, a man investigating the death of his wife and the horrors that follow. He soon discovers the haunting tale of Mary Shaw, a ventriloquist who was publicly humiliated by a little boy during one of her performances. She then killed the child, which led to his family, the Ashens, executing her in retaliation. But unbeknownst to them, Shaw became a vengeful spirit who sought to eliminate every member of the Ashen bloodline. In the original ending, Jamie discovers that his father was dead all along, while his stepmother Ella is possessed by Mary Shaw. As screaming allows the spirit to kill you, Ashen's tongue is removed and he becomes part of Shaw's twisted family. The final ending, however, changes a few plot points and tells a different fate for our protagonist. Ella is a lifelike puppet that Shaw resides in rather than a possessed human, and while Jamie has the same revelation as in the original, he screams as Shaw lunges at him, which seals his fate. Number 8. Max in I Know What You Did Last Summer one of the horror films that capitalised on the success of Scream was I Know What You Did Last Summer. The movie adapted Lois Duncan's novel, was written by Scream's Kevin Williamson, and became one of the most popular slashers of the 90s. Max serves as one of the side characters in the story. As Julie's friend, he becomes a prime suspect early on as he encountered our main quartet during the opening accident. Max is proven innocent, however, when he is stabbed and killed by the fisherman. Director Jim Gillespie states that Max's fate was actually decided by test audiences who wanted a death early on. As the movie didn't feature a lot of carnage during its first half, as the novel had no deaths, the filmmakers decided to add an additional kill. Max's death was then filmed to satiate those demands as well as to establish a sense of danger for our cast. This decision would prove to be wise, as killing the character kept the tension going and showed how dangerous the fisherman could actually be. Number 7. Principal Himbri in Scream One of the supporting players in Scream is none other than Fonzie himself, Henry Winkler, who plays the role of Principal Himbri. Unlike most authority figures in horror movies, the principal is rational. He works with the police and even expels students when they cross the line during an insensitive prank. But sadly for him, the character is the third to be killed in the movie, as our killer stabs him in his office during broad daylight. But Himbri, much like Max in the previous entry, did not die in the original script. The character received the chopping block due to producer Bob Weinstein. Weinstein noticed 30 pages in the screenplay without any death and ordered writer Kevin Williamson that somebody must die. In order to fulfil his request, the principal was killed by Ghostface during this new sequence. While this was intended to add to Scream's body count, Himbri's death would serve a purpose in the story as it gave a reason for the teens to leave Stu Marker's house. Number 6. The Dutch Businessman in Hostel 
Eli Roth's Hostel is one of the films that pioneered the torture porn subgenre. The movie tells the story of three men who backpack in Eastern Europe and are caught in an underground society of rich people who torture people for pleasure. By the end of the film, only Paxton is left standing, and he encounters the Dutch businessman, the person responsible for the death of his friend Josh. Audiences are then treated with cathartic violence, as our protagonist follows the man into the bathroom and gives him a brutal death that is well deserved. This ending, however, was only possible through reshoots. You see, the original ending was much bleaker than what we got, and can be seen in the director's cut. The difference is that the Dutch businessman was accompanied by his young daughter, and would have ended with Paxton kidnapping the little girl in order to get back at the man. Realising that this ending was too ambiguous and bleak, Eli Roth filmed the sequence we all know today. Ultimately, killing the businessman was the right choice, and gave Paxton the justice he deserved. Number 5. Spike in Alien 3 it's no secret that the production of Alien 3 was a nightmare. From the numerous script changes and conflicts between first-time director David Fincher and Fox, it's a miracle that the film was released at all. And one of the things meddled with throughout production was the host for the new breed of Xenomorph. Whilst previous entries featured a Xeno bred through humans, Alien 3 introduced the concept that the creature could take the form of its hosts. This led to the Runner Alien, a bipedal version of the extraterrestrial that was faster and bestial. In the Vincent Ward script and initial shooting, its unfortunate host was an ox who was impregnated by a facehugger. But the producers questioned this decision as the animal producing a fast alien did not make sense. This led to the creation of Spike the Rottweiler. This canine companion was unfortunately added during reshoots and was chosen to be the host for the alien. Though David Fincher's assembly cut is the superior version of the film, this change is one of the more understandable ones, as the runner alien shares more characteristics with a dog than an ox. Number 4. Marge Thompson in A Nightmare on Elm Street a Nightmare on Elm Street is considered one of the most iconic slasher films of all time, with Freddy Krueger becoming a pop culture icon. In the original, Nancy Thompson encounters the villain when he starts killing her friends one by one inside their nightmares. To stop him, our final girl pulls Freddy into the real world, which turns him mortal. We then get a thrilling final battle where she uses booby traps to injure her attacker. And when cornered by Kruger at the end of the film, Nancy denounces him and says it's all a dream, which kills him for good. In Wes Craven's original ending, our heroine then wakes up from her dream and finds her mother, Marge, as well as her friends, seemingly alive. She and her group then drive off, but the film closes with the haunting Elm Street rhyme, making it ambiguous whether the sequence is a dream or not. But producer Bob Shea wanted a twist ending and demanded Craven to film one. This led to the theatrical ending, which plays out like the original, but ends with Freddy pulling Marge through the front window of her home. Number 3. Esther in Orphan 2009's Orphan tells the story of Esther, who becomes adopted into the Coleman family. But the child is no ordinary little girl and, as we find out, is much more dangerous than she appears. This is because the Orphan is actually a murderous adult woman with a condition that has allowed her to appear young. By the end of the film, Kate Coleman and Esther duke it out on an icy lake. After a few struggles, our hero manages to get the upper hand and kicks the villain in the face, breaking her neck. But this conclusion was not the intended closer for Orphan. The original ending of the film did not feature the climax at the frozen lake. Though Kate and her daughter Max manage to survive in this version, Esther goes back to their house and performs her little girl act on the authorities. This trick would work, and the film would have ended with Esther living to see another day. Had the original ending been kept, it would have opened up future possibilities with Esther potentially continuing her murdering spree somewhere else. Number 2. Carter in Final Destination Final Destination launched a horror franchise and is known for its inventive and gruesome death sequences. In the original film, Carter Horton is an antagonist character who clashes with our hero Alex Browning. In the original ending, Clear Rivers becomes next in death's design and so Alex rushes in to save her. Realising the only way to stop the pattern, Alex takes a live wire which burns and mortally wounds him. But our hero's sacrifice would ensure Clear's safety, as dying would break death's plan and stop the accidents for good. A year later, our heroine gives birth to her child with Alex, and by the end of the film, she and Carter meet to mourn their fallen friends. 
This did not test well with audiences, and so a new ending was filmed, set six months later. Alex this time survives his heroic sacrifice and makes it to Paris with Clear and Carter. Realising death is not done with them yet, a series of events nearly kills our protagonist, but he's saved by his former enemy. But by saving Alex, death's design resets and goes back to the first in line, Carter himself. The film then ends with a large sign heading straight towards Carter, who realises his fate too late. Number 1. Susan McAllister in Deep Blue Sea Deep Blue Sea is the 1999 horror movie where sharks are genetically modified to become intelligent and wreak havoc in the process. Though no footage has been unearthed, save from some interviews and a movie still, the original ending remains one of the most well-known pieces of trivia about Deep Blue Sea. Dr. Susan McAllister, the woman who experimented on the sharks, would deliver the killer blow to the aquatic villains and essentially redeem herself. The film would then end with her and Thomas Jane's Carter sharing a kiss. Test audiences were none too pleased about this and hated it, as they blamed Susan for causing the whole disaster. This led to director Rennie Harlan changing the film's ending to the one we all know today. Additional footage was filmed, with Susan making a last-minute sacrifice that ends badly as the sharks maul her to death. While the character was rewritten to be killed, LL Cool J's preacher, on the other hand, was resurrected as test audiences liked him. He even manages to take over McAllister's role and saves the day, a change that was well received by the viewers. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed anything, then please do let us know in the comments down below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.